Wonderful. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to meet you again. It's Wednesday afternoon. It's Marcus time. And today we are going to talk very interesting topic, trading with commodities. And we have to talk about the following topics like the history of commodity trading, some special characteristics, then different types of uh, commodities and how we can trade with com commodities. Uh, I hope you can make sure that you stay until the end of this webinar, or if you watch it later on YouTube, that you stay until the end of the web uh, the end of the video, because when I want to show you um, how the investors or how big and huge traders commodities can be uh, for they for that people they can very important way to diversify the portfolio beyond traditional securities. My name. Maybe you know me already. My name is Marcus Gabel. I'm a trader, speaker, coach, mentor. I love to teach people. I love to encourage people. And I love to help people to fulfill their dreams and to help that dreams come true. This is my job to help you. And um, yes, I do this job since more than 20 years right now. I have my own trading service. And I'm a trader in a huge uh, asset management firm like Bonsch, uh, called Born Stahlberg and Partner in Switzerland, Germany, and Japan. And if you want to have more information about myself, then please visit my homepage, tradingandpersonality.com. In this webinar, I'm partnering, uh, uh, this is the Trading Spotlight seminar, webinar series, and I'm partnering with Admiral Markets, which is a Forex and CFD broker that offers trading over 8,000 different uh, financial instruments through one of the world's best trading platforms, MetaTrader 5 and 4, of course. And uh, finally, if you watch this later on YouTube, please remember to like this video if you like it, uh, or can, you can share with other traders and subscribe so you will never miss an ep ep if you ne Jesus, that you will never miss an episode. If you have, like, if your friends and your family or in your surrounding, then invite them to this series. And uh, Paul and Jens has, have also wonderful topics. And uh, we would like to share our trading ideas through the whole world, like in Asia, Africa, or wherever you are. So friends, I'm really happy that you're here with me today. And now, you know, it's Marcus time. I have my own uh, view at the charts and at the market. Don't hesitate to ask me whatever is in your mind. I can see the chat box, please, in the question or in the chat box, type in what you want to know. Uh, if it fits to the uh, topic that I want to talk about, uh, most of the, I guess most of the most, most of the important things is that trading is a human thing. Uh, so everything is available, every strategy is talking about and uh, but you see on the bottom of this slide, 81% of all traders, not only with this wonderful broker, uh, at every broker, lose money. So there must be a reason. And my view at the chart is the human view. That's the human point is the most important point. So you can know uh, almost everything about trading, but the, at the end, there is a Marcus at the screens and there is a of Freya, there's a Ronald, there's a Chesley, there's whatever. That's the people that are sitting in front of the screens. And at the end, you are alone, the right side of the chart. So today, let's talk about trading with commodities. And we want to dive in a little bit deeper. And if you have any questions, type in into the chat box. So uh, basically, Trading commodities is a really ancient profession with a long, long history than the trading of stocks and bonds. Claudia, wonderful good afternoon. Nice to meet you here. So where was the earliest market ever? Do you know that? The earliest market ever. It was written down and first it mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, our Bible. It was the, the Egypt pharaoh about the wheat because they are uh, in front of a seven years of suffering of hunger. And there was an analyst like 
uh, his name was Joseph, and he had a dream, and he made this special analysis that they will have wonderful seven years. They have a lot of harvest of weeds, but after the seven years, they will there will come seven years of hunger. So that was a special analysis, and that's the first market, and that was the first future. And they uh, bought a lot of wheat in this seven years of very huge and wonderful harvest that they can overcome the next seven years. So that was the first mentioned market in the human uh, history. And uh, yes, in the uh, human history. And as you see, it's a really, 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 really ancient profession to trade with commodities. The rise of many empires like the Egypt uh, empire can be directly linked to their ability to create complex trading systems and uh, facilitate the exchange of commodities like this first mention in the Bible between Egypt Pharaoh and his analyst uh, Joseph. In our modern times, commodities are still exchanged throughout the whole world. A uh, commodities exchange refers both to a physical location where the trading of commodities take place and to a legal entities that have been formed in order to enforce the rules for the trading of standard, standardized commodities, contracts and related investment uh, products. So there on the one side, you have the miners for, of course, they mine gold or uh, the farmers and uh, whatever you, um, you can see around the world. And then this products will exchange at a special exchange uh, um, place, London, New York, whatever. But that two things, they we are related to each other. Some commodities exchanges have merged or gone out of business in, uh, in recent uh, years. The majority of exchanges carry a few different commodities, also some specialized in a single group. So now here we go to the uh, places. First of all, and the most known uh, place, there is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, short CM. E. And then we have New York Merchantile Exchange, shortcut NYMEX. Then the, the Intercontinental Exchange, the ICE, in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Kansas City Board of Trade. And of course, in Europe, we have the London Metal Exchange, shortcut uh, LME. And its name impl implies the London Metal, Metal, Metal Exchange only deals with metals. So Claudia, tell me, I love trade gold because move a lot. Saludos from Medellin, Colombia. Claudia, wonderful greetings to Colombia, Medellin, from small city in Bavaria, Germany, Straubing. Lovely greetings to uh, Colombia. And, uh, but please be careful about focusing on gold. A couple of years ago, I had a client. He was a piano player and he wanted to trade. He wanted to channel. He has less money. He was, uh, most of the times he was broke. And then he came to me and said, Marcus, teach me trading. Now for a couple of weeks, uh, he said, oh, I'm a professionalist in trading gold. I said, okay, what are you doing there? Do you know the market? Yes, I know the market. Ah, then I said, okay, tell me, do you know the biggest trader in the world about gold? And then he said, no. Then I said, okay, and you want to tell me you know the market? Really? Really? Do you know every single trader around the world which is trading gold? Do you know those guys? And he said, no. So I, how can you say you are a professional trader? Couple of weeks later, he called me again. He said, now, oh, I figured out oil is so easy to trade. Okay, I said, oh, now you are the professional, professional trader of oil. Yes, I know how the oil market is working. I know a lot of moves and I know that. 
Okay, let me ask you. His name was Thomas. I said, Thomas, let me ask you this one thing. Do you know this special guy in Thailand, which is the most well-known trader of all? Do you know his name? And he said, no. I said, how can you tell me you know how the oil market is going on if you don't know this biggest trader in Thailand? I know this guy, um, which is trading oil. So you see, it's a big, big trap if you are focused on one special market. Claudia, for example, this name gold on the chart is just only, it is a commodity, but it is just only a label, no more, no less. You cannot trade gold unless you have gold in your hands. Or maybe I make you a ring of gold as a gift and bring it to Colombia, maybe. Then you can trade gold, of course, that can sell it to anyone. But at the moment, if you have a look at the chart, it's your own perception. Everything comes from you and you trade only this label. So what do you really trade? The label or the price? What do you really trade? It's always the price. Gold is just the label. So stop focusing on one single chart. I made it a lot of times in the past and I failed. It's very, very difficult unless, dear Claudia, unless you have a special strategy which is based on rules, which is based on statistically proven system, then you can trade one. But this is from the human side, really, really difficult. And if you don't have experience for more than 10, 15 years, it's really, really hard. Unless you can say, uh, I make money last five years. Are you successful in the last five years with trading gold? Tell me. Tell me, do you, uh, do you were successful? Did you were successful last five years? If not, hmm, you should think about it. Okay, no. So I understand, but please be careful. Just an advice from the bottom of my heart because I make coaching all, the, all day and I know this. And just a lovely advice to you. So, Fernando, I'm starting trading commodities. Greetings from Fernando, Cumbria, Portugal. Oh, I love Portugal. I was a couple of times there for, uh, for a vacation. Greetings. Thanks, Fernando, for watching this, this uh, webinar. So, let's go on to the next slide. And I love to communicate with you. You see, it's not a, not a boring webinar. I want to talk to you, wherever you are, in Africa, in Asia, wherever you are, let's talk about the trading. And you can ask me whatever you want. Uh, we have time almost enough, as long as my house kicks me out from the webinar. <laughs> Thanks, Roman, for opening this webinar again. So let's talk about the special characteristics of the commodity market. In a broadest sense, the basic principles of supply and demand are what drive the commodities markets. Claudia, did you hear me? The basic principles of supply and demand is that what drives the markets, the commodity markets. And by the way, every market, Forex, shares, stocks, indices, futures, whatever, every kind of trading is based on supply and demand, no more no less. And if you don't know that, and if you, and as long as you don't know the market really, really clear, really carefully, you cannot become successful. And this is why I talked to Claudia at this point. Most of the traders, especially the unexperienced traders, are focused on the label, like, um, yes, gold, or DAX, or natural gas, or silver, or oil. Some, ladies and gentlemen, this is just a label. At the end, you trade the price, and the price is that what is traded in the book map, in the order book, not the label. 
the label has a price like Gucci or uh, Tom Taylor, some, most of the times it's a good stuff that's really good, but it's more expensive than clothes from the next store. Why is it? You have to pay the label and the label has its own price. This is what interesting. And in the book map and in commodities, especially there, because we have a physical stuff in our hand, like, uh, like the, the fast of oil or the sack of wheat or a small a couple of coffee. That's really stuff. And there is a demand, there is a supply, and this costs something. So I don't care about the label. I learned based on the teachings of my own mentors and teachers, I have to trade the price and I need to know if the price is cheap or expensive or fair valued, whatever. But stop watching the labels, check the price and then trade this price based on your strategy. And I hope that you have a strategy. If you don't have a statistically proven system, I can promise you, and this is a guarantee, that you will never become successful in trading. But if you want to become successful in trading, you need more than to know how you push the button for go long and short. That's too easy. There is a special reason why 80% of all traders fail in trading. So hi, the world, Ireland, lovely greetings to Ireland. What's your opinion on gold and why is it fluctuation so much this week? It's because of the vaccination and presidential election, but it's price, it's crazy volatile. Yes, do you know why? Just only one reason. One reason, it's not about the vaccine. It's not about the election. It's not, that's the label. That's what's what the this is what the market wanna make you believe. But open the book map. Can you see there is a column where you type in the reason why you go long or short? Guys, there is only one reason why gold is so uh, crazy at the moment, like all the other most of the other currencies and underlyings as well. Why is it based? On any kind of news, we have more buyers than sellers. And if you have more demand than supply, the price must increase. There is no other option. And this will is the only answer to your question. Why is it only this way? More demand, less supply. And if you ask me why is gold now decreasing, we have more supply than demand. That's everything. And this is the only point we have to know. And if you want to become successful with commodities trading, you have to figure out where you have to get in to participate from the next movement, not to know when the trade is, when you can make a lot of money, this is not the intention what you ha should have. Only figure out a strategy how you can make money. This is my opinion. Why gold and euro and uh, the indices. Yes, of course, there was hope about the vaccine. But there was no column where it's, stand, where it's written down vaccine in the book map. Just only suddenly we had more demand than supply. That all. And this is not a strategy. You cannot calculate such, such, um, such moves, movements. You cannot predict those things unless you have a crystal ball. I don't have such thing. Alfred, I heard that trading commodities is for those who have large funds on their trading accounts and some of us are excluded to trade only currency pairs. Oh, no, that's not. Uh, okay, if you have $100 on your account, maybe it's not possible to trade commodities. But if you have this lovely broker like Admiral Markets and you have maybe 1,000 or 5,000 on your account, you can trade with one, with one uh, contract, with one lot or with a CFD 
of example, if you have MetaTrader 5, you can trade with CFDs on commodities. For that, you don't need to have a huge account. Uh, Alfred, it's right that the huge traders are lead the market. Yes, but if you know, and if you have a mentor or a teacher who taught you how you can trade this, not this uh, information like in this webinar, which is on the surface, uh, then you can trade with a small account as well, like uh, our CFDs, for example. Alfred, Namibia, wonderful, welcome. Okay, thanks, appreciate your opinion. I've been using Heiken Ashi since I watched one of your videos a while, very helpful. Thanks, thanks a lot. If I can help you, I am happy. If you are happy, I am more happy. So, but Heiken Ashi is just a view at the market. Uh, it's not enough to know that. It's helpful, yes, but you should know how, what is beyond the scenes, yeah? That just, this is just a tool how you can trade with the changing of the color, but you need to understand what is beyond the scenes, just an advice. Okay, changes in supply impact the demand. Low supply equals higher prices. So we had, uh, guys, we had no change. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had actually back to, uh, to William. There was no changing of the supply in gold or demand. It was just only based on the news. You cannot trade news properly. That's go out of that. That's stay on the sideline is better. If you want to trade commodities, follow my advices here. Any major disruptions in the supply of a commodity, such as a widespread health issue, for example, that impacts cattle, can lead to a spike in the generally stable and predictable demand for livestock. Do you remember the movie uh, with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd? How is the English version? I only just don't know the German one. It's the Glücksritter. Um, I don't know the name. Trading places. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. With uh, yes, um, Dan Aykroyd and um, Eddie Murphy. So they traded orange juices, and that was the they traded the commodity rip uh, the uh, COT report. I love this movie so much. I love it because it shows you how the commodity market works. All the traders were waited, were waiting for the COT report, how the harvest was going on, that they can trade the orange choices. So you see, if you have a bad harvest, less supply, huge demand, price must increase. And in the opposite direction, of course. The movie was filmed in my city. Oh, Jesus Christ. You must be a happy guy. <laughs> I love it. I really love it, this, this movie. Global economy, development, and technology, technological advances can also impact prices. So, for example, the last four years, we had really, really terrible years. And I guess you know the name, uh, which should be unknown, like Harry Potter. It was Voldemort. It was Lord Voldemort. We had four terrible years, a lot of wars, trade, trade wars around the world, which makes some, which brings some uh, prices higher and higher. So the last four years was a wonderful example how uh, economic developments uh, can also impact different prices. So, and now I hope we don't have a lot of Baltimore as, more, as long. So for example, the emergence of China and India as a significant manufacturing players, because the, the demanding a higher volume for industrial metals has contributed to the declining availability of metals such as steel for the rest of the world and steel, the price of steel, they are rising up, really, really rising up. 
which types of commodities we can trade. Commodities that are traded are typically sorted into four categories, broad categories like metal, energy, livestock, and meat, and agriculture. Let's start with metals. Metals communities include gold, silver, platinum, and copper. I love to trade co copper is an interesting chance. Listen, copper is really interesting at the moment. During periods of market volatility or bear markets, some investors may decide to invest in precious or in precious metals, particularly gold, because of its status as a reliable, dependable metal with real, conveyable value. Why? It is, like I said to Claudia, if I present you a ring of gold for your lovely fingers, then you can take it in your hands. So this is a real value. You can take it in your hands. Well, here we understand each other, right? So, and this is why gold is called like a, such a, a safe haven, like Japanese yen and Swiss franc and gold and the, uh, the bonds, of course. And gold is one of these called safe havens. And as you can see, this kind of metals like silver or copper or platinum, they always go in the same direction like the indices. Why is it? If we have a strong economy, if we have rising indices, most of the times we have a weaker dollar, but at the same time, the commodities, the metals are rising up as well. Why is it? If you have a strong economy, the economy needs a lot of commodities, a lot of metals to work with for the industry. So the prices are going up. If we are in a depression or in a, de in a, in a recession, the economy is very weak, dollar most of the times is high, then we need less metals, which means that we have falling prices. And by the way, all commodities we are calculated in dollars. If you have a strong dollar, you have weak prices in commodities. And if you have a weak dollar, then we have strong prices in commodities. Why? Commodities were calculated in dollars. Strong dollar, very expensive for the commodities. Weak dollar, very cheap. Please take it. Okay. Um, this was, yes, investors may also decide to invest in precious metals as a hedge. That's the next point against periods of high inflation or currency devaluation. It's kind of hedge, hedging. For investors, energy. Energy includes crude oil, heating oil, natural gas, and today I wanna to show you an example with natural gas. I love it, wonderful trade. And of course, gasoline. Uh, the global economy developments and reduced oil outputs from established oil wells around the world have historically led to rising oil prices as demand for energy related products has gone up the same time that oil supplies heavy dwindled. So, you know, a couple of years ago, I paid for my uh, for maybe, for maybe one, uh, one liter uh, gasoline, I know 79 or 80 cent in the highest uh, price. I don't know, uh, Vincenzo, I guess three years ago, we paid almost 160 euros by one liter. So actually at the moment we are around about $1, one dollar, one three, one ten. Sometimes if I catch some day, I can pay 98 or 99 cent. But the economy is down. We are we are we stick deep in a recession, actually. And believe me, guys, it's gonna be worse the next 10 years. It's really gonna be worse. Investors who are interested in entering the commodities market in the energy sector should also be aware of how economy downturns and shifts in producting enforced by the organization of the OPEC and new technological advances in alternative energy sources 
like wind power, solar energy, biofuel, etc. Because that aim to replace crude oil as a primary source of energy can help, and all this can have a huge impact to the market prices for commodities in the energy, energy, energy sector. We have the sun. The sun energy is almost limitless, almost. Wind energy is almost limitless. But be careful, oil is limited. Gold is limited. Natural gas is limited. Maybe not in our generations, because we are young, you know? We are all, all of us, we are 25 years, or maybe 30. But we, maybe not in this generation, but our kids or our grandkids, maybe they will see the impact of limited commodities. Livestock and meat, that's something to eat. Livestock and meat commodities include lean, hogs, pork bellies, live cattle, and feeder cattle. By the way, I don't trade those things. I don't trade this cause. I eat meat very well and seldom because I, uh, I want to protect life. And uh, this is not my, it's a kind of ethic topic in my life. I don't trade livestock on meat. Coffee, yes. Natural gas, yes. Orange juice, yes. But nothing I can eat. And by the way, I avoid to make eat uh, meat most of the time. Sometimes, very seldom, sometimes I eat meat. And I say thank you for this animal who dies for me, dies for me. Agriculture. Of course, agricultural commodities like soya bonds, corn, wheat, rice, cocoa, coffee, cotton, and sugar. Oh, I trade sugar last time, yeah. In the agriculture sector, grains can be very volatile during the summer month or during any period of weather-related transitions. We have the storm uh, in, uh, oh, not California, in USA, this, what was the name of this bad storm? hurricane. Oh, I forgot the name. But uh, you know what I mean. Not Chicago. Charlottesville, I guess. I don't know. Katrina. Thanks, Katrina. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Um, and this has a huge impact for the economy there, over there. And for investors interested in the agriculture sector, population growth combined with limited agricultural supply can provide opportunities for prof profiting from rising agriculture commodity prices. I have some friends in Nigeria and I have friends in Ghana, of course. And I know why agriculture over there is so expensive, less supply, huge demand. It's really, really terrible. But I hate it if we throw away our agriculture here in Europe because we have too much of them. And in Africa and Asia, people must suffer and starving. It's not okay for me. And, uh, but we should pray for that, that we can change this one. Um, I don't trade things I don't believe in ethically. I'm a nurse. Yes, I love it. I love it. I, and I work with uh, karmic principles. So I have my special view on my life and of trading as well. And uh, we should good, do more good things to others. And then it will come back to you. So we have to protect life. This is one of the reasons why, why I avoid to eat uh, meat, of course. Uh, but it's my just only comic principles, of course. Liz Tradition Espanol. Wonderful greetings. So German from Marburg was in Houston. Yeah, Houston during Katrina. He said it scared the uh, shots out of him. Yeah, of course, that's, thank you, Elio, very much, thank you. Katrina in uh, Houston, exactly, that was. So how to trade commodities? Both novice and experienced traders have a varied variety of different options for investing in financial instruments that give them access to the commodity markets. 
While community futures contracts provide the most direct way to participate in the price movements of the industry, there are additional types of investment with less risk like CFDs that also provide sufficient opportunities for commodities exposure. So I, for example, I trade with CFDs. That's the easiest way. And you can participate on, on the, the higher amount on my trade. Um, asset management with the uh, huge accounts. Of course, I trade this one well in futures, of course. Uh, in the most basic sense, commodities are known to be risky investment propositions because they can be affected by uncertainties that are difficult, if not impossible to predict, such as unusual weather, pattern, weather patterns, epidemics, corona, welcome, and disasters, both natural and man-made. And do you know why we suffer about Corona? Do you know that? Did you ever think about why all, why the, full, the whole world is suffering about Corona? Think about it. It's poor egoism of the whole mankind since generations. Every single human being on this planet is at the first place selfish. And this is why suffering Corona, all the whole world. Think it through. Think it through. You will, you will, you will see it. Now let's go to a real example, how you can trade commodities. And let's see, I will show you this one. I have a special strategy. I have a trading plan. If I want to trade kind of commodities, then first of all, I check the COT report, Commodity Commitment of Traders report. So the most, the biggest trader around the world has to report their open positions to the, to the US government. COT report, COT report, is just only a um, US report. It's not valid uh, uh, for the German ones or African or Asia, it's just, just only um, uh, American style. So, but we can read it. And this is really interesting cause, you know, the commodities, and by the way, every single market is led by the huge traders with the huge amounts. So it's like the elephants, follow the elephants. Even you are a mouse, follow the elephants, jump on the back and ride with the elephants. That's the good, the really good thing. Okay, so let's check natural gas. Here we go, this is natural gas. And I wanna show you, this was in February, 2020. So we have, at uh, that moment, we have a last price. The red line means huge traders, they don't have any short positions anymore. And the blue line means that's the traders. The price went down. So around about the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, we have really, 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 really cheap price in natural gas. First information, huge traders, the miners, the producers, they had no short positions in the market, you know? COT report is just only hatching positions for price or against price. So noted, market, end of the year, just the beginning of the year. Second one, check the seasonalities. Seasonalities means natural gas. You see, uh, now, now, in the last 20 years, starting with September, we had rising prices till the end of the year. So now we can predict both on the information like the huge traders trade. Okay, natural gas should be go up since September. And this is not kind of guessing. It's based on facts. Says nullities, it's the average of the last 20 years. And the COT report, what are the big traders? Where are they placed, short or long? And now check the market. Check the market. Here we go. You see, 
at the end of the last year, natural gas went down. Then we had a stabilization since the first month of uh, 2020. Then the price went up first time, then went down. We saw a double low, a do a double low. and then you see since run about what is it? June, the price went up. So that's just a small advice for you guys. If you trade commodities, in God's sake, not in four hourly charts or five minute charts. If you want to make day trades, then do it in indices or, or liquid um, shares or Forex, of course. But if you want to trade commodities, please use the huge moves from the big traders. Big traders are not involved in minute charts, guys. They have too high positions. Their positions are too huge, too big to trade in five minute charts. They have to trade in and to trade out, but not in five minute chart place. So if you want to trade commodities, use on CFD if you have a small account, and then please use Heikinashi. There you can see the changing of the color, and then you know it should gear up especially you have you are in a special place and by the way you could see the price green zone so much cheap again based here we go again cd report you see february cheap prices and then slowly the price went up you see june up and up and up and up and up the price went up and the higher the price, the more short positions the producers uh, build up. And on a seasonality, you could see, okay, price now uh, in natural gas. Here we go, March, here we see, you see the trend up and up and up and up. And now natural gas should rise up again. So this is how you can trade commodities for example you can do it in cocoa in coffee in oil and whatever check what the big traders are doing where they are placed because they have to report their positions to the government and then check the weekly chart by heikinashi so you can make really really huge money but this is just the surface guys this is just swimming in the pool on the swallow side not on a deep side you have to dive in deeper, but for that, please take a mentor who can teach you. Okay. On the commodities, I just trade with gold, silver, copper, platinum. But as I said before, I'm a beginner. I started a few months ago, Fernando. Stop it. Please stop it. As long as you don't know what you have to do, as long as you don't know how the market really works, please stop it. Invest in a mentor who can teach you and then start trading again with deeper knowledge. What you try to do is to drive a Ferrari without a driver license. Believe me, if you want to care for your family, uh, if you build up for retirement, please. Just small advice from my side. Is tax good for day trading? Yes, of course. Of course you can do. So what's the symbol you use on the right hand side with the red and green? Uh, this is a special indicator, it's a price indicator. And uh, the price, I had, it's without the price information, it's like stumbling blind into the market. Because as I said, you only can make money if you buy cheap and sell expensive, or if you sell expensive and buy cheap back. But for that, you need an information about uh, what's the price actually on the right side of the chart. So, and in natural gas, for example, weekly chart, as you can see, the price went up from the cheap price back to the point of control, exactly the uh, fair value price. So you see, for example, uh, Fernando, do you know this? You know such things like price? If not, 
go back to school, please. Just an advice. You can do whatever you want. Trade, but you will lose all your money. And I guess you want to trade to become successful and to make money. And Admiral Markets is supporting you in making money. Therefore, we have this lovely trading series for Trading Spotlight. We have our trading community, of course. About trading community, I want to show you, of course, but make a conclusion first. You can see commodities are traded, uh, typically sorted into four categories, metal, energy, livestock, meat, and agriculture. And for investors, commodities can be an important way to diversify their portfolio beyond traditional securities. And if you want to become successful in trading, stop focusing on one market. You have to diversify your portfolio. Please, just an advice again. In the most basic sense, commodities are known to be risk investment propositions because the market supply and demands based on prices is impacted by uncertainties uh, that are difficult or impossible to predict you know, weather patterns, epidemics, disasters, both and man-made or natural, of course. Yes, and there are a number of ways to invest in commodities. One I showed you, cot reports, seasonals, Ekinashi, weekly chart, and you can trade in ETFs or options, future contracts. Yeah? And um, yes, that's all, guys. Now I, want, I don't want to leave you behind. Please join our trading spotlight community. We... I guess we have more than 204 uh, participants at the moment, a huge family, really. And we share our ideas there. We can talk about everything there. And you can see Paul and, and Jens as well there, tradersyard.com, group number 312. Just only one requirement, real account with some deposit on for Admiral Markets. 203, wonderful. So next time... Friday, Jens is talking about how to trade like a hedge fund manager. One interesting topic, hedge fund, market neutral, arbitrage, global macro on Friday, 13th, this Friday. Same space, same spot. Guys, thank you very much for your time. I send a lot of greetings to you wherever you are around this planet. I say thank you that you shared a lifetime with me. Um, it's not, I take it not for granted, of course not, because life is so precious and is so valuable. And I want to say thank you, get in contact with us and let me say thank you for your time. I hope you learned a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions, come to my homepage, tradingandpersonality.com. Let's talk about trading. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope we will see each other next week, same time, same space. Be careful about your thoughts, guys. You know their reactions. That uh, they are there. Be careful with your thoughts, because at the beginning of your actions. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye.